On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back at Eddie's Chevrolet Cadillac here in Wichita. You guys loved the last video of the cheapest truck you could buy today. Well, this, today, we're here with one of the most expensive half tons. It's simply double the price. What is going on guys? I am Watch J Argo and today, like I said, we are out in a 2024 Chevrolet Silverado High Country. And if you're looking out the window right now, my hands are in the air and the truck just changed lanes. Auto lane change complete on the dash. I don't know if you noticed, but adaptive cruise control just show, slowed the truck down, automatically went around this truck, and here it goes, changing lanes automatically. It said, look for an opening. And now on the dash, it says, changing lanes, lane change complete. Woo wee! We have a flashing green light telling me I need to look out the window a little bit more. Hey, all I have to do is touch the turn signals. I don't have to do anything else. Wow. This, maybe, I might be a little bit speechless right now. It might be my favorite car on the road. Super Cruise is amazing. It's got a lot of downsides. Let's get back to the shop and let's talk about this truck. Today, we are starting it off a little bit different here. We're starting it off by hooking up a trailer to a brand new truck. And I am super, super excited about this. The camera suite on this truck is unbelievable. So we're backing into the new house here and let me show you guys what we're talking about. GM has absolutely nailed the cameras on this thing. Look at the 3D view. Here's my turning lines right there. And of course, we're gonna move to the hitch camera here in just a moment. So I'm gonna get close to this trailer. I've got the camera mirror up here. And I think based on the fenders and the real mirrors, we're about in line. We already threw a ball on this thing. This is something you don't get to do very often with a brand new truck. Right. I was way off, but let's switch to the, there we go. Way off, will it work? It looks like it's gonna work. This thing has an amazing turning radius. Kind of crazy the camera is perfectly sharp right there and then it distorts right in there you guys can see eric dropping the trailer on saying we need to pull forward just a hair while eric's dropping the trailer on let's take a look at the other views here oh the front cameras look at the wheels so i'm wondering these must be on the mirrors yep and instead of moving the camera it just disables it when the door is open you can see where you're gonna end up if you go forward, which is cool. What's this? Oh, wow, straight down on the front end. And is this straight down on the back end? Look at that. All right. Oh, okay, so you can switch between trailer and parking lines. Really cool. And then here is straight backwards. How awesome is that? Thanks, man. The technology suite on this truck is incredible. And the whole reason we went to pick this thing up is because I just saw that Chevrolet commercial where they were showing towing in Super Cruise, and that's what we're here to do today. Have the truck drive itself in Super Cruise, which should be absolutely amazing. As long as it lets us, we do have check trailer brake lamps, and I know one of those LEDs has always been broken because the trailer's miswired. There we go, check trailer left turn signal lamp. Um, that's always been an issue with this trailer. Hopefully Super Cruise works without caring about the trailer lights. We are in, really? I'm not doing a very good job here. What's blue mean? There we go, green, okay. It took a second. Apparently blue means Super Cruise is starting up. Hey, there we go. She's finally catching up to the speed limit here. There you go, guys. I'm not touching the wheel. We've got a trailer behind this thing. The Chevy commercial was not a lie. All right, girl, figure it out. Auto lane change. Come on. If you're gonna slow down for these people that unable to change lanes. Interesting. Well, before it was changing lanes just fine. What if I force the lane change? Okay. And now it's blue again and flashing, so that must mean I need to control it for a second. And it's still blue, 
There we go, it turned green. All right, we can finally chill. This is the life, guys. There is nothing better than this. Now, of course, it's not the only truck that can tow a trailer self-driving by itself. Uh, as you guys know, I've got Kama AI in my Volt, which is incredible. I love just driving to Texas like this, stopping and filling it up one time, and then just sitting back and doing this the whole way. It's so great. This is so much better than any Tesla because you never have to touch the wheel, except for you know the full self-driving, but that's become like a nightmare recently. Of course, if you guys follow Twitter and the Tesla owners, uh, FSD and its nags have become absolutely insane. They're saying that if you even reach up to touch this, the, the radio or change any setting, it just freaks out and kicks them out of FSD or tells them to pay attention. This is doing great. You can see that I'm looking around. I can have a conversation with you guys. I can take a look out the window for a minute, just like Kama lets me do. Love that. And Weston has Kama in his Ram 3500, and they pull a 40-foot gooseneck with that thing, and the truck drives itself, which is top-tier road trip material. There could be nothing better than that. So, we are headed to the scrapyard with that C5 Corvette on the trailer, and we're just gonna relax, let the truck take us there. It should, it's following the traffic. I'd like to get a little bit closer. Gap adjust, towing, shorter. <laughs> look at that. So just like my F-250, the adaptive cruise gap automatically gets longer if you're pulling a trailer. So even when it's on the lowest setting, it's more like the longest setting in standard cruise. So the truck always gives itself lots of braking distance. The radar's making sure everything's safe around you and the auto lane changes in this. Well, that's incredible. So that is driving this thing. It's super comfy. The gauges have gotten so intuitive. It's This is an incredible, incredible truck. There's a lot of data in front of you. Now that we've driven it around and enjoyed just riding around in comfort while the truck drives, pulling a trailer. We're pulling a trailer. I do. Yeah, look at that. You can see it on the digital mirror there. Uh, we'll get back to the shop and I'm gonna take you guys on a complete tour of the amazing 2024 Chevrolet Silverado High Country. This should be the most expensive truck you can buy today. It's actually not, it's missing a few options. We'll talk about all that and more in just a second. Let's go get this Corvette uh, crushed. Well, we are down one Corvette. If you look in the digital mirror now, you it's can see that there's a trailer hiding in there and... <laughs> we have a Sentra on the trailer. <laughs> we have an invisible Sentra. <laughs> that Sentra is way back there, of course, because it's an empty trailer behind us. So the Corvette is gone and this thing has been amazing towing it with no hands. I can't say enough good things about that other than the fact that it won't auto lane change with the trailer. Apparently the technology just isn't there for the truck to know if there's a car around you when you got a trailer on the back of it. The radar probably just doesn't reach that far. Whenever a trailer's hooked up and you turn on your turn signal, check it out guys. It flips on a camera all the way down the side of the truck. And we are back in the shop with the 2024 Chevy Silverado High Country and this is the most expensive truck you can buy today. Now, it's not, it's not actually loaded. If it was a GMC Denali, it'd probably be loaded a little bit more, but I would say this is an average, very high-end spec that most people would be buying. In fact, the MSRP on this truck is $79,000 and change. Now, I do think you can get a half ton a little bit closer to $85,000. They should be about $90,000 today with every option. And you can clearly see right out of the gate that it's missing options. Like it doesn't have the power steps, it doesn't have the giant glass roof, and uh, there were just a few other little random things that it's missing that you would get on a totally loaded one. But this is a very good spec. I think it's a, a very good representation of what most people are ordering for consumers that want a nice truck to haul the family around in. It's a pretty wild price, right? Seventy nine thousand dollars and it's honestly one of the best trucks i've driven in a long time for years and years and years i have hated chevy because their interiors were terrible there was like a 15 year span basically where the interior never changed it was boring it looked bad and that was what from 2012 until 20 or something like that to until 22 i think and it made everybody not want to buy a chevy truck they were the bottom of the rung even though uh, personally, the Duramax is the diesel for me. 
but now they've redone all of it and it's really good. Then again, Ford jumped in and they refreshed everything and it's even better. And of course, Ram has been sitting there at the top of the technology ladder for a long time, but Super Cruise is the differentiator. So let's go around this truck, take a look at it, and uh, just talk about all the features, what's in this thing, and see if you guys want one too. Let me know in the comments if you would buy a truck like this or if you would go back to the last video where we talked about the cheapest truck you can buy today, the other 2024 with the four cylinder work truck, almost no options. I mean, I say almost because now they are forced to come with options like power windows, but this thing's loaded. Let's check it out. Right out of the gate, you can see the power steps are missing and it kind of makes every truck look poor spec without the power steps. I will say this does work for the look of the truck. I can't hate on it too much. One thing I gotta tell you guys, this is a crazy thing that I learned today on these power folding mirrors. Of course, you would expect that full power. Um, they've got turn signals in them, blind spot LEDs in them, 360 cameras under them, which are incredible because they even show you the front wheels while you're driving down the road if you want. And of course, puddle lighting, all the stuff you'd expect out of a fancy mirror. They're not trailering mirrors, but when you push power fold, they won't do it. The truck says, no, no, no. Unfortunately, I like to have some control of my truck. That one really bothers me that you can't fold them up. I get it, it probably needs it for driver aids, but it's not cool that you can't control the power stuff while you're driving. It probably does turn back on at lower speeds, but I don't know what that speed was. As you would expect on a 2024, everything now has 22s. So these are uh, what, 275, 50, 22s, and it's a good looking wheel painted with plastic. Yeah, those are definitely plastic chrome inserts right there. You know, it, it looks okay. Personally, it's probably not the wheel I would pick, but it looks good with the truck. This truck is put together in a nice spec. So I'll, I'll give you the fact that it all ties together. Big high country badges up here above the belt line. One thing that's ridiculous, I hate this. Why'd you do this, GM? Who thought that was cool? I get it on the Duramaxes, but the 6.2 up in the middle of the hood, just making it harder to polish the hood and clean the truck, like, come on, it doesn't really make any sense. All right, coming around the front of the truck here, we've got cool little Chevy logos in the all LED headlights here. These look great. I don't know if these are animated. We're gonna turn it on in a minute to see if they are factory animated. They should be, I see it on a lot of the new trucks. So I am very much expecting those to have an animated turn signal that looks great. I do like the high country and the grill here. It looks great. Monster Chevy badge. Here's some cameras. Is this the wiper sprayer? It sure is. It can spray its own camera off, which is good. Um, a lot of times you'll need that. You're off-roading, snow, who knows what you're doing. It's nice to be able to wash the windshield and have the camera clean itself. Front ultrasonics, you can see those right there. LED fog lights, they look great. Somewhere in here, there's some radar hiding. I don't know where it's at, I would assume. Inside the Chevy badge. People are really starting to hide all the radar inside the badges. Anyway, the front end of this thing looks good. I don't have any complaints about that at all. So walking around it, see if there's anything else notable here. Acoustic glass, just tempered. Interesting, maybe the Denali gets acoustic glass. This is in the pearl white tent coat. Pearl white tent coat looks amazing. It has these drop in stake pockets, which is cool. Uh, they usually are covered up on all the new trucks, but this one, they're ready to go. We do have the multi-pro tailgate and the side steps, which I love. Those are super nice. Not only that, it has more cool things here in the back. You've got a seven pin under there, but then you have the trailer cameras. So this is, I think that's inside the trailer camera. That one's really interesting there, but that's a camera connection, not a four pin. And then this is behind the trailer connection. So you can see where you're backing up and see if people are behind you. LED everything, as you'd expect, LED tag lights. You can throw the crank in there to lower the spare tire down. It looks good out back. Like I said, one thing that's weird is the reverse lights are not LED. The main rear camera is right there. Um, I think the rear view mirror one is right there. That, there might be two cameras right there in the third brake light. Um, you can see the two black dots beside each other there. All LED third brake light looks great. Multi-pro action. So we'll hit the button. There's no hitch in here, so the multi-pro won't run into anything. So then we'll hit the multi-pro button. Drops out. Bring the step down. No kicker audio system or the multi-pro lighting. That's a new option as well. You can have this step lighted. My feet are dirty, so I don't want to get up on here and demo it. 
but I do love the Multi Pro. If you're sitting on your tailgate, it sure is nice. If it was a Ford, people would be making jokes right now about how you'll be using it a lot while it's broken on the side of the road. You can see we were using it, just made a Harbor Freight run, and I still got one of my Max straps in the back there. You also get this handhold, helps you get in from the Multi Pro tailgate there. If you need to step up, you can grab the little handle. It has nice LED bed lighting and a 400 watt, nothing like Ford's power, pro power package. You do get 110 volts, uh, 120 volts at 400 watts out of the inverter right there. One thing this truck's missing, I don't know what happened, Eric and I were talking about it. Maybe it was braking a lot, maybe there was a part shortage. This does not have power up tailgate. And when Jared gave me this at the dealership a few minutes ago, he was like, mine has power up. I don't get it. Don't take those options away, Chevy. You, you build cool stuff. Don't put them on some trucks and then take it right back off. It's a high country, it should have power up tailgate. Anything interesting in here? Capless and premium fuel recommended. And I would assume it can run on E85 as well. I assume that because under the hood, we've got the Escalade engine, the 6.2 Ecotec 3 V8 direct injected. Super Cruise is 2,200 extra dollars and it requires an active subscription. We'll get to all that here in a minute. The tech package, this, this literally has all the stuff you would want as a consumer buying one of these things. Adaptive ride control, suspension, active exhaust, multi-flex tailgate. It's, pretty, it's a pretty good setup. The 6.2 is now cranking out 420 horsepower, 460 foot-pounds of torque, and that goes through the 10-speed transmission that we expect to have in everything these days. Should be the A10, the co-developed transmission with Ford and GM. And it's just, it's a solid transmission. This thing hasn't done anything weird today. It drives exactly the way you would expect. Let's see if we can see the high country video here. Start up. Mirror starts up. Before we dive into the excellent looking interior in this truck, let's look under the hood and show you guys that 6.2 V8. Eric's out here pulling the radars off of the Fusion right now. Hey, you know, uh, they had already cut a bunch of the harness, like the tail lights. So if you want, just grab the wire cutters and take six inches of the harness with it. Why not? They are animated. Good deal. Look at that. Love to see it. The rear tail lights are not animated. Wouldn't it be cool if these started here and went like that? Under the hood, it looks just like the four cylinder. Tons and tons of room in here. All this plastic in front of the radiator. The 6.2 tucks right back in there. And I'm telling you, it sure looks easy to work on. I am not upset about that one bit. One giant harness for most of the connections here. Math, easy to change. One crazy thing is I think this takes zero, zero W20 there, guys. Even the V8s are on zero W20 now. We, of course, have other holdovers from the four cylinder, like the excellent jump terminal setup. If you need to jump start it, hook something up, you've got your positive right there and your negative right there. Heater core looks easy to work on. They have really nailed servicing these things. It just gets better and better every year. They're designed to be worked on now. All right, as soon as you shut the hood, listen to the difference. It's so much quieter. Also, I did notice it has the active exhaust. It didn't start up very aggressively, but the first time this thing started today, it was insanely loud. And I think that's because we're in normal mode. I, I didn't want to drive around in sport. Ah, listen to that. It immediately gets way more aggressive. The exhaust just opened up. Let's listen. Okay, back to normal. Exhaust shut. Quiet. Back to spore. <laughs> That's how you make the remote start stay aggressive. You leave it in sport. It makes sense. So we're gonna start with the door panels like we always do on the driver's door right here. You can see it has the Bose system. I also don't think this has subwoofers. I think it's just six and a half down there in the door and that's it. Uh, it does not pound. It sounds good, but it does not pound. The door has a bunch of storage for your water bottles. You get two water bottles in there. The part I always use for a trash can right there, not only dry trash. I keep it nice in my truck, but uh, great door panel laid out like you'd expect. Locks where they need to be. Uh, memories right there. And I think that, is that exit? It might be easy exit or something like that. I'm not sure what that button is. I've seen it on a million cars, but I've never needed it. So I just leave it alone. Here's our power folding mirrors. You can see them folding up. Even though it doesn't work when you're driving. Hey, there's the high country animation. 
but not the middle. It's not doing both. And it usually plays a whole movie. Uh, we've got auto up and down here in the front and auto down in the back. And even though it feels like auto up, it is not. Unfortunately, even though it's loaded, it's not loaded enough. Power mirror controls and rear window locks right there. So jumping into the driver's compartment, we have some amazing technology and it's gonna take a minute just to tell you about all of it. So let's start where it's missing a bunch of stuff. It does have power sliding rear glass. As you'd expect, it's getting pretty standard these days. Always nice to have, backing up a trailer or whatever you're doing. It's nice to be able to yell at people behind the truck and they can always hear you through that back window. This does not have the full glass roof, but it does have the sunroof. It's listed on the option sheet as well. This is a cheap option because the pano sunroofs are where the money's at now. Up here in the console, we have home link. This is the rear glass slide, sunroof controls right there, slide and tilt, and then OnStar right there, and the passenger airbag indicator. LED lights, they look great. This mirror obviously rocks because it's a screen. This is part of the tech pack, if I remember right, but you can see the cameras and the mirror, and if you flip it, it turns back into a real mirror and shuts off the LCD. So super easy to use, and you can also move the mirror up and down digitally, change the brightness, uh, zoom in and out. You can do a whole bunch of different things using the buttons right there. You'd think they were home link, but these are the mirror controls. Another thing I don't like here on the sun visor is watch this. Oh wow, it's just, nope. It takes like 10 seconds to fade on, what's the point? Uh, I like a nice fade, it makes it look really you know, classy when they fade on, but that takes too long. The sun visors do come out and slide everything you'd expect, so set up very nicely. And they're also very thin, they're not overly padded, so they shouldn't fail. One of those things that kills me is when they overdo the sun visors and then the material starts sagging on them. This looks like it'll hold up for a long time. Starting over here by the driver's door is all the cool stuff, honestly. So this has a color heads up display. Here's the heads up controls right there. You can change the info it's displaying, move it up and down in the windshield and also change the brightness of it. It's super nice. And now this is another cool thing. They use one part for both of these. Go GM. So they simplified all the lights and four wheel drive down to the exact same control and just changed the screen printing on them. So this is a uh, tow haul. This is drive mode. These are your four wheel drive controls. These are all the lights, fog lights, cluster brightness and the bed lighting and perimeter lighting or something like that. Electronic parking brake, as you would expect. And now the steering wheel, which is where a lot of the magic happens in this car. So all the cruise stuff is very nice and very simple to the point that now when you set the cruise, it tells you on the display that it's in adaptive cruise. And if you hold the cancel button, it will switch out of adaptive cruise and go to regular cruise because some people like that. Now I hate regular cruise. I always want it to be adaptive, but usually it's buried in menus and they've made it so easy to use that people can drive it however they want. So, you know, go them. I don't care what you do with your car, but I do like that it's easily accessible in this. This is your follow distance for the adaptive cruise, and this is the button for super cruise. You wait until a little icon, the same icon appears in the cluster, and you hit the button and the truck drives itself as soon as the green light illuminates at the top of the steering wheel. Blue light means you need to take over for a minute, but it's in super cruise. Green light means you're good to go if it's solid, and if it's flashing, you need to pay attention. And this is the camera that's looking at your eyes, if I remember right. It, it has to be, BMW does the same thing. So this should have infrared illuminators that light up your eyes and then it follows where they're at. And as long as they're in this vicinity, somewhere around here, you know, you can look out of any of the front glass, it'll keep driving the truck. We've got paddle shifters. We've got volume up and down hiding behind that. Uh, track back and forward is over here along with the shift down. Auto wipers, auto headlights, auto high beams, everything that you want in a car. Super, super nice. And over here, there's no stock at all. They got it all onto a single stock, turn signals, wipers, and of course, lights are actually down there, so this is nice and simple. Uh, power tilt telescope, as you'd expect. There you go. And a giant screen right here and a giant screen for the cluster. One interesting thing is I know GM has moved to a single part for the cluster, if, if I remember right. I mean, I've seen a few of these clusters out, and now they simply have power can and a USB port on the back. It's so nice. Speedometers have gotten so complicated over the years where there were 30 wires going into them. These are down to probably eight wires or something like that. But really it's mostly power can 
and then there's a USB port where they can flash the cluster to do what it needs to do. So in the Corvette, they can pull a cluster, reprogram it, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Same in this, it's just an LCD that bolts in. And because it's an LCD, I think federal law has made them do this. You can barely make them out, but all of the warnings are actual LEDs hiding underneath the cluster. I think they weren't allowed to put warnings that mattered in an LCD cluster. So they added a little row of lights. You can see ABS, um, that's a brake warning, seat belt, brake again for the electronic parking brake. Those are all hidden down there and they're real lights, not just on the LCD. Heading over here into the center of the truck, we've got a lot of stuff going on, but here's home for the infotainment power for the infotainment, volume, you get a knob. Everybody's gonna be excited about this. There's a lot of buttons in this. You don't have to use the touch screen for anything if you don't want to. It works incredibly well. Engine start stop, trailer brake right there, trailer gain right there. Nice to have that. Stop the trailer whenever you want. Let it slow the truck down when you're pulling too much. You guys know how it goes. Great T-handle shifter, I love this. Uh, press for park shift by holding the button and moving it the direction you need to move it. You can do the GM thing where you can only heat the top or heat the top and the bottom of the seat. Cooled seats, heated steering wheel with a button. Shout out to GM for doing that better than Ford could even fathom. I don't know how my brand new Ford doesn't have a button. That's That one's infuriating. I've almost wrecked the truck 50 times because the steering wheel will be 100 degrees, but you have to go through six pages of menus to shut it off. So buttons for everything else in the climate, dual climate as you'd expect, on and off for the climate. This is really well laid out and it makes sense. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to use any of this. I don't have any problem with incredibly complex climate controls. I don't mind them at all, but this one has truly made it simple. There's a button for everything. Passenger gets cooled, heated seats, all that good stuff. USB-C, USB-A, really nice up here. We've got the lane assist. Uh, it will actually steer the truck if you go across the lines. Uh, turn on and off the parking sensors, auto start stop, power tailgate. Hey, power tailgate open hazards and traction. And this button is great. Roll down all the windows at once. Let's actually demo that. We got the more aggressive start because of the sport mode. Love that. All right, so we'll hit the button right here. You guys ready? Like an old convertible, how sick is that? Every window at once. I don't know that we needed that button, but shout out to GM for putting that in here. It's actually awesome. You can see the camera mirror doing its magic right there. Off, normal mirror, on, back to the camera. The cluster, incredible, it shows you a ton of info. Big fan of this. Compass in the middle of the speedometer. What seat belts are buckled and unbuckled right there. Uh, what doors are open. Here's super cruises right there. Normal cruises over there. Coolant temp down there at the bottom. Fuel down there at the bottom and it's in two-wheel drive right now in sport. Let's change the drive mode so you guys can see the cool animations. Off-road, all right, the truck off-road, sport. It's on a racetrack, normal. It shuts up and it's on a highway. Back to sport we go, okay. Uh, you do have a Siri or voice activation button. Hang up your phone call right there. And of course, we can put really anything you want in the gauges, super, super nice. Let's see, drive summary, giant speedometer. You can put anything you want up there. Driver assistance, tire pressures. I mean, this thing is great. You have built-in Google Maps as GM tries to navigate away from CarPlay, which is insane. Uh, but they don't even have built-in navigation. They use Google Maps and they have to have data to do that. Trailering stuff right here, a whole page of that. Phone connections right here. Google Maps full screen right here. Go to settings. You have to turn on location. We'll turn it on for you guys. Everyone knows where this house is at now. We'll just hit, let's just hit done, close. There we go. Music. Oh, hey, cool. We get a trailer page, maps, and a giant clock if you want a giant clock. That looks great. What a good looking. This is really responsive, it's really well done. Google News, the Google Podcasts, I guess, Amazon Alexa, XM, Bluetooth, everything in the audio menu. And here's home. Oh, you can bring all the climate up here. I haven't even seen it yet. That took way too long. Okay, well, you'll basically never need this in your life because shout out to GM, it has buttons for everything. I don't know why you'd ever go to this page. 
and Wi-Fi hotspot. Well, that's basically everything that matters. Uh, I showed you guys all the cameras while we were driving. They look great. Really, really nice cameras in this truck. Woo, we made it through the infotainment. It was a lot. This truck has basically everything you could ever want. Great spec for a daily driver. Uh, haul and stuff, whatever you wanna do, this is a great spec. And having Super Cruise makes it an amazing truck. But there's more to show you guys, so we're not quitting yet. Let's do a quick walk around of the whole interior. Look at all this storage. Around the shifter, you've got storage, storage for your phone. This works great. You've got dual cup holders right there, and they'll hold a big old Yeti, so perfect. They've got that nail just like Ford does these days. Uh, I've got a bunch of keys sitting up here. It works great. Tons of storage there again, receipts, keys. And here you've got the center console. Not only that, but this is the wireless charging for your phone. Another USB-A, another USB-C, and inverter power down here in the console. The console's gigantic. It's lighted. Look at all that room you get. And of course, just put more stuff on top and even more stuff in the bottom. Look at that. It's perfectly made for restaurant napkins. I hope you guys keep yours about that full like I do. The leather looks amazing. Giant cup holders here in the back as well. They look great. High country seats with the almost saddle inserts there. The embroidered headrest, they look great as well. You can adjust the seat belt height over there on the side. I do think this has a perimeter lighting button because look at that, the mirrors are all lit up. So you can probably hit that button inside and see everything around you at the work site. Not as good as the Fords though. The Fords come out of the side of the mirror, which is how it should work. When you pull up to a job site, I wanna be able to light up everything around me without going and getting a bunch of lights out. Obviously, you can leave the key in your pocket all the time. You've got uh, unlock button right here on the door and it's locked. There we go, it's unlocked. <laughs> Over here on the passenger side, you got some window controls, locks. It has an upper and lower glove box like you'd expect from everything these days. That button opens this, which I mean, they're not too useful. I don't, I don't think I use mine for anything, but it's there. People want it, I guess. You've got some storage down here. Uh, for both sides, passenger and driver. Here's the glove box. Ooh, soft open, that's nice. Some uh, funnel in there for maybe the walk. Oh, for fuel, that's interesting. Oh yeah, that does say it's for gas. If you have to fill it up on the side of the road, that is a gas funnel, not for washer fluid. Cool. Power seats, but they are not massage. I don't know why Chevy has not figured out how to do massage seats. There can't be a patent. I mean, Ford's got it in basically everything. So put the massage seats in there, it's easy to do. Here in the back, you've got a lot of leg room. It seems like less than my Ford, but it's still a lot of leg room. I would have no problem going on those 10 hour road trips in this truck. It looks uh, comfy. Uh, here in the center console, you got rear vents, heated rear seats, not cooled, which is also weird in a high country. You would expect it to have every option, USB-C and USB-A again. So what's six USB ports in here, a good compliment. Everybody can charge their phones. That's what we're going for. Make it easy for everyone in the car. You don't have to plug anything in for them. The storage in this though, I love. Check this out. The back of the seat opens and you've got a compartment there. Headrests move in the back seat. You've got cup holders and storage here. Just cup holders and a little pocket. And let's run over to the driver's side rear and take a look under that seat just to see how much storage there is. But I would say that is most of the back seat on this thing. At least it's got nice storage underneath that it opens up nice and easy. Easier than the work truck did. The work truck, you had to yank on these seats. There's the driver for lowering the spare tire and the jack. And this is a nice carpeted storage. Really well done. I love the all weather floor mats with it too. It's, uh, it's a good setup all the way around. So there you have it, the 2024 most expensive truck you can buy, kind of, Chevy Silverado High Country. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out to Eddie's Chevrolet Cadillac here in Wichita for loaning me this truck and letting us test out Super Cruise, use it to pull a trailer and show you guys just how amazing it is. I'm still unbelievably excited about this. Even if it doesn't have all the options, sure is nice. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchchairo.com for cool shirts, not like this, and please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. I will talk to you never. How's the Ford going? It's, you know, like every other Ford. Oh, the e-brake's stuck on, isn't it? Oh, it's off. 
I thought we were uh, in trouble there. I thought we were gonna have to power the actuator and get those electronic key brakes to turn off. Let's take a look at the other side here. This thing, the brakes were definitely on and we had a jack under it to move it. And now they're suddenly off. And it has massage seats. It doesn't. It does. It's uh, apparently titanium's not as high as it goes. It no, could, it does. It, it does could have been a platinum. Yeah. Still a pretty loaded car. If they don't sell me an iridium, I'm going to riot. <laughs> At least you can get some spark plugs for it. Yeah. <laughs> the video. Check it out, guys. You can see the whole High Country video now. Finally. And I think the Denali's animation is white snow covered mountains. Well, we learned one downside of Super Cruise just now. I turned on all the lights in the truck so you guys could see me and Super Cruise disengaged. It said cannot see face clearly. So at night, apparently you got to have the lights off in the interior if you want to stay in Super Cruise. But we were Super Cruising on the highway and I'm on the phone with Jared from Eddie's Chevrolet right now. And I was like, man, this truck's missing a lot, right? I was like, it's missing the roof. It's missing the steps. The reverse lights aren't LED, like, you know, all the complaints I had in the video. And it turns out Chevy may not allow any of those things. So Jared, what were you saying about this again? So on the panoramic roofs, uh, that's only in the SUVs. The Chevy trucks don't offer that. Oh. As far as, as, far as rear air conditioned seats, the Chevy trucks don't offer those either. Man, so you really have to go after a Denali if you want every option but i then again the denali probably still doesn't have the pano roof correct i guess we'd have to look yeah yeah okay uh maybe it's got the rear ac seats <laughs> but i'm not positive on that i'm not either i'm not either it just seemed like it was lacking because you and i both had brand new fords last year right so and now i have the ltz silverado you know, it's fully loaded and it doesn't have them either. Your truck's awesome. And my other take on this, one thing I should mention is the seats fit me a lot better in this. The Ford seats are so wide uh, and so bolstered that they push my shoulder blades forward. And honestly, I, I think this truck is more comfortable than the limited F-250. So a little mind blowing. What do you think? You've got a brand new Chevy and of course you had the brand new Ford. Which one's more comfortable? It's kind of hard to compare seeing as I had a Super Duty versus the 1500, but the 1500 just rides better. It is very comfortable. Like I've taken it on a few trips now and didn't have any issues with it at all. I definitely think it, it rides a hundred times better. <laughs> it's not bouncing around in the rear end. Absolutely. And then the one thing that it is missing is the power steps. It just didn't get that option. So I guess this is the most expensive Chevy you can buy minus the power steps. Right. Okay. Well, thanks, man. I'll uh, I'll bring you this thing back tomorrow. That sounds good. All right, talk to you later. I do want to mention two more Super Cruise things real quick because first, it's amazing, but you do need to understand how it works. It doesn't work on a lot of roads. So I was just on a divided highway where it was rocking and rolling. And you know, most of the time when you have driver assistance systems, once they're on a highway that they work on, once it finds the lines, like in a Tesla or with Kama, it doesn't stop driving. Even if the lines disappear, the car just manages it. But this thing, as I drove into this town where it goes from 65 mile an hour to 30, um, it starts flashing red on the steering wheel and it says take vehicle control, super cruise disengaging. And I was like, what, was I not paying attention? And then right after that, it was like road information unavailable. So when it's not on a supported road that hasn't been like 3D laser scanned, which Chevrolet does to make this magic work, um, it just stops working, it just shuts off, which is no big deal, let's be honest. But it even vibrates the seat, a full seat vibration, and it says, hey, I'm gonna shut off. And then the other thing that it does is when it does its auto lane changes, uh, it vibrates the side of the seat that it's gonna change into automatically. You know, you don't touch anything. It says, I'm gonna change lanes, and then it warns you by vibrating the seat on that side. And it's super nice, non-intrusive. You totally understand what it's gonna do. And it's just good. Like, it's so intuitive. Love it. Can't wait to drive back home after I grab some tacos.